On this episode of Little Arms, we're going to cover the physical examination of a child with amyoplasia. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how you move your shoulders. So let's go up like this. There we go. Alright. So that's shoulder abduction. We're going to check for passive shoulder abduction. Right. Love to see external rotation so he gets to neutral. Over here he gets to neutral and see the hands are facing each other. So his elbow range of motion is just to about 90 degrees here, but it's the additional supination and the wrist flexion that allows him to reach his face. Now when we look at supination, here he's about 30 degrees, pronation is about 60. On this side, he's about 90 degrees of supination. It's a big difference, but his pronation is only to neutral. And even though the books say that all these kids are supposed to be in pronation, that's actually not true at all. They have about an equal incidence of being either stuck in pronation or stuck in pronation or having the pronation as a patient. And every kid is a little different. Then we look at wrist flexion. This wrist flexion here is almost 90 degrees, about 80 degrees or so. And you can see his total arc of motion is pretty minimal from 80 to about 45, so maybe 40 degrees or so. 35 degrees of motion, and he has active flexion of his wrist. He has good finger flexion. His thumb tends to have a more persistent thumb and palm posture. So another thing we can do for him is to turn his thumb in this position, and then he would have more tip to tip, and his grasp would be enhanced by a deepening of the first web space. <clears throat> in his case, I would not do a carpal wedge because he needs wrist flexion to reach his face. He also does not need a humor rotation osteotomy, although he had one. Correct, on the left. He had one on the left, but he has not had one on the right because both hands reach to almost neutral and the hands face each other. Right. In terms of finger motion, his finger motion is actually quite good. He has good finger extension, good finger flexion. His fingers would be permissive of a carpal wedge osteotomy. However, his elbow motion really prevents me from doing it because he needs that wrist flexion to reach his face. So generally there are um, four contraindications to a carpal wedge osteotomy. Number one, insufficient finger extension to be able to take advantage of the additional wrist extension because he would get stuck. Watch, if I put him in more extension, open your fingers. I've compromised his finger extension, whereas he's down here, he actually has better hand motion and better overall finger function. So that's one contraindication, the in inadequate finger extension. Number two is he needs wrist flexion to reach his face because of limited elbow flexion. Right. Number three is there are kids who will weight bear on the dorsum of the wrist. If he's doing that, even if I do a carpal wedge, he's going to undo the work. Mm -hmm. And what's number four, Steph? Wiping. What? Wiping. Wiping. Yeah. Number four is one of the most important things is that they need wrist flexion because they're through the legs wipers. <laughs> if they can make it around the back, which I think he could, does he wipe That's behind the exactly back? That's exactly what he does, yeah. When he wipes behind the back, you don't need as much wrist flexion. But if you're going to go through the legs, you need a lot of wrist flexion. So they, those are the four contraindications. Number one, inadequate finger extension. Number two, flexion needed to reach the mouth. Number three, flexion needed to wipe. And number four, flex, flexion needed to ambulate. In terms of thumb position, you'll look to see that the thumb here has extension at the MP joint, but flexion at the CMC joint with, uh, he's actually not too under rotated, but very often you'll see a thumb more in this position. And for that, we do a rotational osteotomy and extension osteotomy that I've called the thumb reorientation osteotomy to put this in a better position for pinch and grasp so that he gets more of a tip. And you can see already it's a little bit improved if we do that, but he's not so bad. He clearly could benefit from a larger web space for grabbing larger objects. So when we look at this thumb, for example, pinch here, that thumb is much harder to pinch 
and he has a greater deformity of this thumb than on that side. His rotation is actually not bad, but you can see the standard treatment of a class thumb with the MP joint fusion is not needed here. But the problem is at the CMC joint. You do not want to fuse the CMC joint because a lot of his motion comes from the CMC joint. Move your thumb around for me. You can see some MP joint. And for him, the main function is not FPL. Bend your thumb for me. And straighten it out. The main function comes from his intrinsics, both thenars. Can you go like, try to bend your thumb around? There you go. Thenars and also adductor which tend to, or flexor pollicis brevis, which tend to move the thumb, but not FPL in his case. Um, so just to go over the list of things that we do. Number one, humor rotational osteotomy to reposition the shoulder in a better, in a better position so that hand-to-hand uh, -hand function is allowed. This does two things. One, it improves bimanual function. And number two, it allows the child to go from here where they can't not see the thumb to here where they can see the thumb. And once the thumb is visible, hand function actually improves. Number two, he is at least 90 degrees of flexion here, past 90 here. What, <clears throat> if he did not have an adequate elbow flexion, we would have done an elbow release here, triceps lengthening, ulnar nerve transposition. And that would get us the elbow flexion that we needed to feed himself. We do not do both sides at the same time because it is, although infrequent, it does happen that children will get stuck in flexion and then you need one hand to be able to feed yourself, one hand to wipe. And if you do both at the same time and both end up stuck in flexion, there is no hand to wipe. Moving down the forearm, into the forearm <coughs> is the one bone forearm, which in our hands has been the only reliable treatment for changing the position of the forearm. Moving further down is uh, the carpal wedge, which we've talked about, and then thumb procedures. Finger procedures are quite difficult. Uh, Campidactyl release is somewhat unreliable, um, but we do perform it on a regular basis to try to help uh, open up the hand. Some children like the campidactyly, particularly if they have limited finger motion because it provides them with a hook to grab onto objects. So for example, if they need to pull up their pants, they can do that with a cantodactylized finger, whereas if you straighten it out and make it weaker, they lose the ability to pull on their pants. Lastly, is elbow flexion. The only elbow flexor plasty that has really worked for us reliably is latissimus. So now pull your arm down that way. We're looking for the muscle here. Chin, carpal wedge, three months ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. For more information, please visit littlearms.org.